In this video, I'm going to show you the beautiful new way of creating and managing page headers in the new GeneratePress Premium 1.4. It's a totally new approach that's elegant, flexible and dynamic. Very powerful, in fact. It, with this new feature, you definitely don't need a page builder like Elementor to create those nice full screen or full width hero image page headers. In fact, in this demo, I don't even have Elementor installed. Shock horror. For this feature, you need Generate Press with the premium add-on installed. It's just under 40 bucks for use on unlimited websites, which is an absolute steal. Now, it's no secret, I absolutely love Generate Press. I'll drop a link below to an article that I wrote all about it. And this new update just confirms everything I say in that article and more. Tom was born. GP's developer has once again done things the right way. So before we do anything else, let's just clarify what we mean by page headers. It's maybe confusing because this bit at the top of your website is called the site header, the, the logo and the navigation bit. But with this new generate press feature, the page headers we're talking about are these things. You know, the big image at the top of posts and pages, often with some text overlaid on them, like the name of the page or the title and date of the post. Now you've always been able to create these type of page headers in Generate Press, but it was a manual process, one at a time, added in each page or post. And there was nothing dynamic about them. Well, they're now much more flexible, really powerful, all kinds of possibilities now, and not just posts or pages either. Categories, tag pages, custom post types, don't worry, all will become clear. But believe me, it's brilliantly done. Page headers are now managed centrally in one place. So here's the new page headers area. And the beauty of this is that you can use the same header on multiple pages. You know, they're not just tied to one page or post anymore. The old GP Premium also had a setting for the main blog page header, meaning the page that lists all your blog posts. The settings for that used to be in the customizer, but now that's managed in this new page headers area too. So when you upgrade from 1.3, your old blog page header settings will be migrated into here automatically if you had that set. All right, let's start with something simple first, just creating a single standalone header for a single page. Nothing fancy, nothing dynamic. We'll move on to creating those dynamic fancy pants page headers next. Okay, so I'll first edit the About Us page. In the page header area here, there used to be a meta box where you created your header. Well, now there's just a drop down to choose a header that you've already created in the central page headers manager. Just to note, if you previously had a page header set here on any pages on your website, you'll still see the old page header meta box here. And Tom's done this so that your website doesn't break, which is very thoughtful. So if you want to convert them to the new page header system, you'll have to revert or remove the settings here in the page first, and then create it again in the central manager. You could of course just leave it alone and all will still be well. So let's now create a single standalone header for the about page. We click on page headers to go to the new page headers management area. Add new. I'll call it about page just for our reference. First, I'll set an image by setting the featured image here. So for this example, the image will be kind of hard coded into this header. Now this content field is expecting some content. The settings below won't work without it. But if you don't want any text overlaid on the header, you can just type a space in this box by hitting the space bar to get around that. It doesn't seem to have any ill effects that I can see. But in this example, I do want text overlaid on the header. You can just type text directly in, but you can also use some basic HTML too. So I'm just going to add in an H1 or a heading one. And I'll just make that about us. I'm going to ignore add padding just for now. I'll come back to that in a moment. Also, we have to select add background image here if we want our featured image to display. You can set the background color here, which by default is the color behind everything else, including the image. Now, if you want the background color to overlay the top of your header, 
then you've got to choose use background as overlay here and that will now place whatever we choose in the background color setting on top of the image instead and that's usually to help your text stand out and give it some contrast on the image so i'll do that so in background color i'll choose black and then just use the slider to drag the opacity down a bit so now there'll be a black semi-transparent overlay over the image everyone seems to love a bit of parallax scrolling so let's add that here too i'll set the container to be full width so the header and image will stretch right across the browser window and this inner container is a new feature and it allows you to set whether you still want the text content inside the header constrained to your usual content width even if the image itself is full width now i'll leave that contained i just think it keeps the design nice and tidy text alignment can stay left too I'm going to skip these padding settings too for reasons that will become clear very soon. I'll explain why. And I'll set text color to white. Okay, I'm going to save that as it is now. I'll come over to the front end about us page, refresh that. No change. And that's to be expected because we've not actually assigned this header to the About Us page yet. So in the edit screen for this page, we just come down to page header here, choose the header we just created, then save again, and then we'll refresh the live page. Well, that's something at least. <laughs> you can see the background image, but the page header itself is actually only as tall as the h1 content inside it so yeah actually if we didn't have that there then we'd see nothing so to fix that we need to add in the padding i just want you to see what it's like without the padding so back to edit the page header so if i choose add padding now and save this then back to the live page and refresh again okay that's better so when you choose add padding, it's actually using your content padding settings from the Generate Press customizer. Now that I think is really nicely done. It's just perfect for consistency with the rest of the site. But it's worth noting that the padding is only being applied to the text. So in this case, it's the H1. So it's not being applied to the, to the, to the page header container itself. But what if we want to see more of the image and have a bit more control? Okay, well, back to edit the header. So I can add in some manual top and bottom padding here. It's actually quite nice in this design set at 15%. So now if I turn off add padding here, it won't use our customizer's content padding setting on the H1 anymore, but it will still use this top and bo bottom padding setting on the entire page header container. So there's lots of flexibility there. And I can add in some left and right padding here. So I'll go with 35 pixels. You can experiment with that. So we'll save that. Over to the live page again and refresh. And that's great. Now, if you're paying attention, you are paying attention, aren't you? You'll have noticed an obvious mistake. I set text color to white, but this text is red. All right, why is that? Well, if I'd have typed just text into the box, you know, without the HTML to make it into an H1, then it'd be white, the color I chose. But in the customizer, all my heading ones for this particular demo site are set to be this dark red color. So to override that, I will just need a little bit of custom CSS, which as you can see here, I've just popped into the additional CSS bit in the customizer. Another way of doing that, there's a brilliant little plugin called Simple CSS, and that's actually developed by Tom, GP's developer as well. So you could use that, that's really nice. Or, you know, if you're using a child theme, you could just pop it into your style sheet there instead. Okay, so that's a standalone page header. We created it in the new page header section, and then we assigned it using the drop down in the About Us pages edit screen. Nice and easy. Uh, just to interrupt your regular programming, just to let you know about some custom settings and tweaks I put in place for all my projects using GeneratePress and Elementor. 
just a few little settings and bits of custom CSS to help with consistent layouts, consistent breathing room on mobile, and a little fix for how Elementor creates column gaps. You definitely don't need these tweaks for a Generate Press and Elementor to work together. I mean, far from it. They both work together great out of the box. I just find these particular settings help me out a lot, and I know it helps others out a lot too. So if you want those settings, just head over to designbuildweb.co slash get custom tweaks, drop me your email and I'll send them over to you. All right, let's move on to creating the blog page header. So that's the one that will be at the top of our blog listing page, which you can see here. Well, we actually create the header the same way. So over to page headers and add new. I'll call it blog page so we know what it is. Choose a featured image. In content, we'll have another H1 heading, um, blog and news. So I'll set this image as the background again, choose the overlay and parallax. Let's go full screen this time, just because we can. Vertically center the content, We'll go full width again, text align center, this time, why not? Same padding as before. Background color can be the same too. And publish. So that's the header itself created. Now we need to assign it to the blog page. Now to assign this one, we come over to the new global location setting. Now this is basically where all the magic happens and it's very nicely done. So all you do is select the page header we just created under posts page blog here. Save changes. Over to the blog page on the live site and refresh. And that looks pretty sweet. Now, of course, in both of those examples, the content, you know, the, the image and the text were kind of hard coded into the header. So what about something more dynamic and clever? Well, let's create a page header now, which is going to be used for all blog posts. So this needs to be clever enough to pull in the individual blog post featured image and things like its title and publish date each time. Here's what our standard blog posts look like at the moment. Basic generate press settings. You know, in the customizer, I, I set my featured images to appear above my post titles, and then you've got the post title here and the content. Okay, this is really easy. Let's come over to page headers again. I'll add new. I'll call this one single post. Now I'm not going to choose an image for this one because we don't want a hard coded static image. Um, in content, I'll create the opening and closing H1 tags for the title. And now for the dynamic stuff. So we come over to these new template tags. Now these tags are just placeholders that will dynamically pull in things like the post title, the date, the author, links to categories, and even custom fields. So I'll grab the title tag, copy and paste it in between the H1 tags. And under it, let's have the date in the author too. Now, yes, we want the background image pulled in. So this will automatically be the featured image of each post. Yes to the background overlay. We'll go full width again. Same padding. Choose the background color. Right, let's save that. So now we need to assign this header to all posts at once. And we do that again in the global locations area. And it's single posts and just choose a single post header we just created and save. Now note, you can also do the same for all pages too here. And if you've got any custom post types, they'd be listed here for you to choose too. All right, over to the blog, click through to a post, and there we go. That's the image and title dynamically pulled into the header. And because we use the dynamic title tag, then the title that was here automatically disappears. Now let's just do one more really cool thing, make our site header transparent on blog posts so they merge with the page header below. 
So to do that, we just need to edit this single post header again, this time in advanced. Click merge with site header, we'll update, refresh the blog post, and there you go. And one quick thing to note, if on any particular post you manually apply a specific different header with the dropdown, then that will overwrite any global headers that you've assigned for that post only. So you really, you've got maximum control. You've got global for all posts, but you can override that for individual posts if you need something more unique. And this all works for categories too. Really cool actually. So I haven't, I've only got the default category, but if I just go to edit category here under posts, and in the category settings, I can choose a pre-built header from the dropdown here. And dynamic template tags also work here too. So the title tag, for instance, will pull in the name of each category. Okay, that's it. The beautiful new page headers feature in Generate Press Premium. Really superb. Nice work, Mr. Tom Osborne. Now, go and make some amazing page headers for your website. If this video was helpful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. My email subscribers get all my best stuff. So head over to designbuildweb.co slash my best stuff. I'll let you know when I've got new Generate Press training and more besides. See you soon.